Fava. He was scored in the 11th spot that time anyway. All right, there's our leader, Dale Earnhardt Jr., the AC Delco Chevrolet. We're going to give an interval back to our second place car, the Zippo Chevy of Jimmy Spencer. This car is marking the 28th car, just went a lap down. All right, the third, excuse me, Betty. The 30 car, there's the Slim Jim machine back in third spot. Next car back in line is the fourth place car of Ab. Matt Kenseth just not just got by Andy Santer. Santer a moment ago was up battling with Todd Dodine. Now he's falling back to fifth spot. I wonder if he just slipped or he's got a problem. There is Santer now back in fifth position. The Monroe Mufflers machine, our pole sitter. Here's the battle for position in sixth spot. Jeff Purvis to Lance Snack Chevy getting some getting a challenge from Jeff Burton. The four is Purvis, the nine is Burton, trickle the 64, the 40 LePage, that is all four position. Six, seven, eight, the ninth. Kyle, that's got to be a little bit frustrating. If you're Kevin LePage and you're looking at your windshield, you're in ninth spot, but you can see the sixth place car right in front of you. But you can't do anything about it because, you, like you say, you're in ninth, he's in sixth. There's seventh and eighth in between you. And, you know, these guys were running, and obviously they're all about the same speed. Nobody can really pass anybody. They're all running a little bit different lines around the racetrack. If you watch them, one runners, one's running low, couple's running high. They're all over the racetrack. But they're all running the same speed, so you're not really sure, you know, who's going to make the first move. With, if they get too wide, you'll see them, somebody make a move to go three wide and get around them and maybe break out of the pack. to Jeff Burton on the throttle of his track gear forward. Tommy Morgan prepared car. Burton coming from back in the pack now showing in seventh spot. And we see Trickle goes up the hill. Here comes Kevin LePage on the inside. Takes the spot away. Trickle slipped getting in the corner. That was just enough. He left an opening for LePage. He drove in and took it. He's showing that wheel, ain't he, Kyle? Yeah, you know, he's been into the wall a couple of times here, and, and he's been pinched into the wall. He's got into the wall on his own. And a lot of times, if you get in the wall with the right front and knock that camber out of the right front, it totally changes the way the car drives. It changes the way it gets into the corner just from a camber point of view. And if you look at it, the, the right, the outside of the, his right front tire looks like it's got some concrete dust on it. All right, 80 laps to go here at Richmond International Raceway. It's Nick Trickle slides by the double zero of Buckshot Jones. It has been all Dale Earnhardt Jr. Little E is our leader with Spencer in second spot. Back in third is Bodine and Kenseth in Santerre. Back in a moment. International Raceway in Rico County, Virginia. Paul Sawyer's beautiful Speed Palace. Short track racing at night under the lights. Ferocious battle back here. 
But these three competitors, lots of experience. Jeff Burton in the nine car, looking back at the channel lock machine of Kevin LePage, and right behind him, the Dexter, Nick Trickle, our most recent Bush Series winner, at coming at Darlington last week. And Glenn Allen in behind them in the 99 car in 10th place seems to be running these guys down. You know, the interesting part about watching this race is they're running high on the racetrack. All these guys are running high. When you switch back and watch Dale Jr. run, he's right on the white line, running right dead on the bottom of the racetrack. So these guys, obviously, they can go to the bottom of the racetrack. As you see LePage try to go under the 9 car, but the motors just won't pull up off the corner enough when you're racing like that. When you're running by yourself, you make a little bit better time for some reason. Triple said, thank goodness. Give me on the straight a little more often. I can relax a little bit. We're trying to fight this thing so badly. Purvis has pulled away from these guys for about three quarters of a second. There we see Glenn Allen closing in. Michael Waltrip as he tries to hold off David Green, the 1994 series champion. That is for position. That is for the 15th spot. And the car number 92 also there. That's Jeff Green driving in Mac Martin's Chevrolet. Wayne Hall, the big A auto parts car, is leading this group. He's in 14. The trickle in 64 at LePage once again. Now, 47 car Santos drifted back, and the four car Jeff Purvis has caught him. That is for position. That is for the fifth spot, and Purvis in the car number four goes by Santer. Shuffles him back in the, in the sixth position, and now here's Jeff Burton on the inside of the 47. We're taking a look. losing another spot, the sixth spot to Jeff Burton. Side-by-side -side action up the back stretch of this D-shaped facility. Burton drives it deep into turn three. Now here's the leader. Here's the guy they're chasing. But a battle heating up for second spot. Spencer trying to hold off the challenge of the car number 30 of Todd Bodine. Todd Bodine, the driver of the 30 car. Oh, and he just moves on the inside of Spencer. You know, Spencer just did that. Just moves around and let him go, didn't he, Kyle? Yeah, no need for him to lose too much time. Let's check in with Bill Weber. Well, Jerry, Todd Bodine spent many, many laps during this race trying to find the right groove, the best spot around this racetrack. About 35 laps ago, he told his crew he found it. He said he was still a little loose in the center of the turn, but other than that, he's very happy with his car. They're going to make an air pressure adjustment when they pit. Well, I will agree with you, Bill. He has found the groove, and it is working well for Todd Bodine and that Slim Jim machine. Here's Glenn Allen, the Luxair car, trying to make a move. Well, look at the triple. He really got that run on the outside, didn't he, Kyle? Yeah, he just gets back in the gas coming up off. You can't use the whole racetrack when you pinch it down because somebody's on the outside of you. You can't let your car free up and go up next to the wall. And you just bog it down too much, and it looks like Trickle had 700 more horsepower than, than Glenn Allen had. Andy Santer, who was running third just a few laps ago, is now drifting back and in danger of falling out of the top ten. He is in ninth spot. I'm told that he, Andy has reported this true that his car is just getting tighter and tighter as the, as the night wears on, and he gets cooler and cooler. So now he has worked his way back to tenth spot. And you receive the 85 Shane Hall of getting a challenge from David Green on the outside. Michael Walter has been able to get by, move Shane back to 15. Now David Green takes over that 16th, that 15th spot, puts Shane back to 16th. He has another Green right behind him, Jeff Green in the 92. 
Waltrip, David Green, Hall, and Jeff Green. Of course, David, the oldest of the three Green brothers. Here is Jeff Burton in the car number nine, the track gear machine, trying to hold off Kevin LePage in a Chevy. Now, these are teammates in Winston Cup competition. Both of them are Jack Roush drivers, but in this situation, they're driving opposite makes. A Ford for Burton and a Chevrolet for LePage. Now, Dick Trickle tries to go up and join this battle. One car looks like Tony Stewart, heavy contact. Caution's going to be out. Caution's going to be out. I'll tell you one thing, this caution flag was pretty well timed for their leaders. It wasn't well timed for Tony Stewart, but we see the left rear tire is completely gone. The tire's off the rim. Man. He had been involved in the initial call short of the night, which came out on lap number two, along with Mike McLaughlin and Brad Knopfsinger, when they sort of got all jumbled up down in turn one. I started to say just a moment ago that these leaders were about time to, that they needed to make a pit stop. And when the caution car picks them up, they will most certainly dive into the pits and get that last pit stop. Here it is in progress, and Kyle, he hit a ton backwards. Yeah, he hit a ton with the left side of the car. You know, he evidently he lost it up here on the straightaway or something happened. He's backwards when he gets there. He hits it with the left rear, slams the left front. Uh, he's still sitting in the car. He's put the window net down, which means that he's okay. Here come the leaders down pit road now. As Benny predicted, 40 miles an hour. They're headed to you, Ray Dunlap. They sure are, Jerry. The first car to get them into his pit stall is going to be the 12 car, Jimmy Spencer, and it will be a four-tire chain. The car was getting very loose on him there towards the end. Now, there's one other guy down here that's going to take a bit of a gamble, and that's David Green. He's going to go with a two-tire stop. Now to Bill Weber. The leader is in. He'll be watching for Spencer to march down pit road. Four-tire stop for Dale Earnhardt Jr. Right sides are on. Coming around to the left side now, waiting for the 12 to march down pit road. The 36 is already on his way. Left side tire, stickers going on. Earnhardt's been a little loose. I think the stickers will correct that problem. He's the first car out of the pit, then the 36, then the 30. 36 car taking two tires. There's Andy Santer's crew finally getting the pit stop completed down there on the Monroe muffler machine. And David Green trying to get that track position. Changed two tires, and he will get track position. I think he came out running in the second spot. Yes, he did. There we see Earnhardt Jr. and David Green. And the Stanley Tools Pontiac, the 1994 Series champion, driving for Frank CC and Scott and Jeff Welliver running second. Back with more live action from Richmond in just a moment. I don't understand where the left rear tire is off that 44 car. I don't know either. Okay. Part of you said part of that. Oh, baby. I think Spencer only changed two tires at first stop. I think Spencer only changed two tires at first stop. Those three had a race on pit road. Yeah, just yeah. a 9, 9 to 17. And yeah. Nice job yourself, Mikey. Good to ask for a better night weather-wise here in the Commonwealth of Virginia. We're at Richmond International Raceway. Paul Sawyer's beautiful Speed Palace. Great crowd on hand enjoying NASCAR Bush Series action. These gorgeous panoramic shots courtesy of the fine folks at Pennzoil at our Pennzoil Copter Camp. 
There'll be about 100,000 people in here tomorrow night for the NASCAR Winston Cup event. The Exide Batteries 400. Three consecutive nights of NASCAR racing action. Of course, coming up next, NASCAR's greatest drivers, a NASCAR 50th anniversary special at the, at the conclusion of our Bush Grand National Series event. We're running a little bit long here tonight. We've had 10 caution flying flags. A record tying 10 caution flags for Richmond International Raceway. Thanks on these guys might be getting a little bit loose a moment ago. See if we can take a look. <laughs> 